What's up and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at the Zephyrus G14 and big shout out and thank you to Asus for sponsoring my trip out here to CES. So I'm prioritizing doing all the Asus videos first, but they do not get any control or have any say in what I say in these videos. Literally, I just upload it without them even previewing it. And I just try to be as honest and authentic as possible with you, my audience, which I, I value your trust. So thank you very much. If you appreciate honest and authentic reviews, please consider subscribing for future content. So the new 2026 Zephyrus G14 is here. We're gonna talk about how this one stacks up versus the 2025 Zephyrus G14, which I tested in two different configurations. I tested the RTX 5060 that had the Ryzen 7 and then the Ryzen HX 370 with the RTX 5070 Ti. Now, the new 2026 Zephyrus G14 is gonna come with a mixture of Intel and Ryzen chips, depending on which GPU and CPU combo you go with but the highest end versions of the zephyrus for 2026 the new ones are going to be intel based and uh, intel is supposedly made some big strides forward some big comebacks here i don't know it seems like amd is kind of chilling right now and intel is making a comeback so i think asus decided to go with intel for their highest end version. That's gonna be interesting to see how those perform, especially when it comes to battery life, because the new Intel chips are only two nanometer, which means they should be crazy power efficient. And they're also claiming some really powerful iGPU performance with their X model versions. Now these do not have the X model versions because these have Nvidia graphics cards and they, I guess, didn't decide to want to prioritize the X model version, which I think is a little sad because the X model version would be really great at gaming over USB-C, which is something that I just made a video about, which, you know, the Zephyrus G16 that I have here, it's great at gaming over USB-C with the Intel Arc 140T. And it sounds like these new iGPUs, like if you get the X version, they're gonna be a lot more powerful than the 285H and Intel Arc 140T. But if you get the non-X version, it's gonna be like only 30% of what the X version of the iGPU can do. So it's probably gonna be like way worse than the Intel Arc 140T. So maybe USB-C gaming is gonna require you using the NVIDIA GPU to get any kind of respectable gaming performance. We'll have to actually test it and find out, but that's a potential con going into this new 2026 Zephyrus G14. Now there's a lot to look forward to about this new version too. There's quite a few upgrades. There's three at least major upgrades that I think are gonna be worthwhile for a lot of you out there. So let's dive into those right off the bat. The new RTX 5070 Ti and 5080 configs can now go up to 130 watts. And in my 5070 Ti review that I did, I only ever saw the GPU go up to about 105 watts in time spy benchmark and then in actual games where the cpu is more engaged we only saw about 90 to 100 watts like that was about it like 90 95 was most common so i don't know if we're actually gonna get to 130 very often i'm guessing we're gonna get to maybe like 115 or somewhere in that range in terms of real world dual load scenarios but we'll actually have to find out and see. In general, because these new 2026 Zephyrus G14s are gonna have more wattage going through them, they're gonna be better performing by maybe five to 15%, depending on how much wattage is actually gonna be pushing through that RTX 5070 Ti and 5080s. Even though the new G14 doesn't have a next gen GPU in it, it actually kind of does in the sense that like it's gonna get to a higher levels of wattage. And I think this also might be partly why they went with the Intel CPU. The Intel CPU, that two nanometer is supposed to be so power efficient that maybe it only needs to sip the wattage, allowing the GPU to ramp even more. That could be one of the reasons why they went with Intel. We need to actually benchmark these things with overlays and see how the silicon performs in real world scenarios. Another big upgrade is to the display. Now we're getting up to a thousand nits peak brightness on the 120 Hertz OLED. It's 2880 by 1800 on the resolution. So same resolution, same refresh rate, but I'm told it's supposed to be 500 nits sustained on the G14 with a thousand nits peaking, which is just crazy levels of bright and much brighter we only had 400 nits sustained, so it's a 25% improvement to the screen's brightness, at least for the sustained levels. Another major upgrade is that now we have a full-size SD card reader instead of a micro SD card reader. And this is gonna be so much more useful to content creators out there. 
Like I just used the SD card reader like, like five times in the last week alone. Like it's super useful. And one of the main reasons why I would have skipped the G14 in previous generations. So if you go with the Ryzen AI9 465, you get 10 cores and 20 threads utilizing the Zen 5 architecture. But the big caveat here is you're only gonna be able to get that with the RTX 5060. So all the high-end configs, so the 5070, 5070 Ti, 5080, all of those are gonna come with Intel. People are gonna say Asus is prioritizing Intel again, and I would have to agree with them. Maybe there's logical reasons behind it and not just because Asus likes to be buddy-buddy with Intel. That's all I'll say. Like maybe they did the performance testing with the silicon numbers and they're like, you know what? This new two nanometer architecture from Intel is really power efficient, which is super important for ultra portable gaming notebooks. We'll actually have to see, you know, the Ryzen AI9 is still Zen 5, just like the Ryzen HX370. So we're not gonna see any performance per watt improvements, probably are not much at all, between the Ryzen AI9 400 series and 300 series. It's gonna be basically be the same thing. So I'm thinking like the Intel one though, it's a totally new architecture. It's gonna be a real next gen CPU. That's I think why they decided to go with the Intel 386H. This is a 16 core CPU non-hyper-threaded, so 16 threads. It features four performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and four NPU cores. So it's really only a four P-core CPU, which on paper is not that many cores. But the thing is, if there's only four performance cores, they might be able to prioritize that within the chip architecture to make them like really high performance, which is really important for gaming and single core performance in particular for snappy application performance. Even though the CPU may not look quite as good on paper, I think in reality, we're gonna still see some really good performance gains on this CPU, at least in single core performance and in gaming benchmarks. Maybe not for multi-core render. I think Intel is kind of leaning away from multi-core render as a priority, and instead they're focusing on snappy performance and better performance in applications and games. So things like Photoshop and gaming should be improved. At least in theory, fingers crossed. For ports, we're gonna get two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A one USB-C 4 with support for DisplayPort, power delivery, and G-Sync, and then one Thunderbolt 4 with support for DisplayPort, power delivery, and that one does not have G-Sync because it's not gonna be hooked directly to the NVIDIA GPU. So it's just gonna be like the previous version where the left side goes into the integrated GPU, allowing for presentations on battery life, and the right side connects directly to the NVIDIA GPU. So if you disable the NVIDIA GPU, you will not be able to do display outs through that right port. One full-size SD card reader with UHS-2 up to 300 megabytes, 312 megabytes per second is what they claim here. I don't even have a card that fast. I got like a 250 megabyte card, so I wouldn't even be able to test that. The other super important improvement is the keyboard backlight. I think the keyboard backlight is a lot better on the 2026 version. It is completely redesigned. There is no more shift and certain keys no longer have letters on them. And so the whole emblem is now lit up. It just looks more consistent, a little bit better. Let me know what you think. Is it improved? I think it's improved. I think it's gonna be better overall compared to the previous generation. Now you still got a 1080p full HD IR webcam with Windows Hello. And then you have a four speaker dual subwoofer speaker system. So you're gonna get some really good sound out of here. Overall, I really like the G14 speakers. It's very, very good. The G16 speakers are the ones that I'm using and I think they're absolutely excellent. Some of the best ones I've ever heard in a gaming laptop. Now you get a 73 watt hour battery and a 250 watt power adapter, regardless of whatever kind you get. I think that's gonna be pretty dang overkill, but the 240 watts from 2025 were pretty small and portable. I'm hoping these ones are even smaller. Now, in terms of looks, you do have the slash lighting on the back, which you can kind of animate a little bit to do a couple different things, just a little bit. It's not really worth much. I actually turned off my slash lighting because I'm really bothered by lights flashing when I'm sleeping and my laptop's almost always in the room with me where I'm sleeping. So it's pretty annoying to have the slash lighting going, at least when the laptop is asleep. Now, when it's awake, it's not bad. I think that's fine. Now, the weight is 3.31 pounds if you get a 5070 or lower. If you go with the 5070 Ti or 5080, you're looking at 3.46 pounds and it's also going to be a little bit thicker going from 0.64 inches at the thickest point to 0.72 inches at the thickest point you're going to go up in weight and in size just like last year's version but despite that you're getting basically a very similarly sized laptop to before but just with higher power limits and likely a more power efficient 
Intel CPU. So those are the key improvements to the Zephyrus G14. And I mean, in the hands, it looks good. It feels good. Made from CNC milled aluminum. The keyboard still feels great. The trackpad felt great. Flex test was very stiff. As far as storage goes, you only have one M.2 SSD slot in here. So you better make it count and get a good size SSD in there if you want to upgrade it at least. Overall, I think the G14 is still a very compelling 14 inch gaming laptop. And interesting alternative is actually going to be the Asus Tough A14 this year because that's going to come with a 16 core 32 thread part with a Radeon 8060S from the Flow Z13. So you're talking about some very powerful GPU performance overall, like very similar to an RTX 5050 or 5060 in terms of rough raw GPU performance. But then CPU performance is going to be like better than the G14 probably by a fair margin. So better for video rendering, better for processing certain types of tasks. I think some of the stiffest competition this year is going to be that Asus Tough A14 and also a new Asus the ProArt PX13 GoPro Edition. Now this is also going to come with Strix Halo and it has like a really classy, really high quality all metal body. Going to make dedicated videos on both the Asus Tough and the ProArt PX13 GoPro Edition. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos. I'll be bringing you lots of new content coming soon. Zephyrus G16 is probably next as well as the new XR goggles from ROG Xreal R1s. Those look pretty freaking amazing and I got some hands-on time over an hour with a pair. So I got a really good idea of how good they're going to be. So that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Brandon out.